So I've just finished doing some mining and it's now time to I guess go back to the Aralu. It's November the 4th, 13 days to go and uh, we've met someone here. Who is this? It's a bad guy. Who is it? It is. Oh, it's another one of these stupid probes. Do not fear. We shall not harm. Oh, really? I don't, for some reason I don't believe you. I wonder why. Mission description follows. Traverse space recording data. Seek materials for replication. Replicate to expand scope of mission. Contact life forms in peaceful manner. After 10 replications, return to point of origin. End of mission description. Priority override. New behavior dictated. Must break target into component materials. And here we go again. Another Slylandro probe to destroy. Still need to work out where these are coming from. Of course, Yaralu said they're coming from a place with uh, some people with no surface. But that doesn't really help us, doesn't really tell us where they're coming from. But here we go. I'm going to test out the ores this time. I've played a little bit with them, and they've got some special marines that they can offload into the ship to attack. Look at this. We're getting a bit beaten, though. Oh, we don't want to die! But look at that, the marines. They attack, and they destroy the Slylandro pretty quickly. Um, don't worry, those things that are circling me, the marines, they actually do count as your... Your crew. So you, you see, I had three crew there, um, but I had like maybe five or six uh, marines floating around. Um, so if we check in uh, in roster here, we'll see that we still got ten crew in the uh, Oars Nemesis there. So it's a really good ship. Um, good long range attack that the um, the uh, marines. That's pretty much the only uh, weapon I'm ever going to be using on the Oars. But they do have like a, a cannon as well, which does like three hit points of damage. I'm um, just going to save the game here because it might be anyone, it might be someone bad. Here comes someone else, a bit slower, so I'm guessing it's not the... Ah, uh, here we go, it's the uh, Aralu. Please, let us chat a while. It has been so many years since I last visited your Earth. So long since I glided across your open fields under the light of a full moon. Tell me of Earth. Tell me of what I have. Oh, I forget myself. How silly. You were born on the distant world. Moons are lost. I have visited there much more recently. Well, I'm pretty sure the top option is not going to get us very fast. We might as well just ask for some information. Change and reform worlds with their deep children. These changes affect others, unfortunately. The fate of your world and your heart relate to these matters. Right, so I guess that's uh, the full usefulness we'll get out of this Aralu. So we might as well just say bye and uh, continue to wait around another nine days until that star pops up. Um, oh, here comes another Aralu. Hello, my clever child. We have met again, and I am pleased. Your people are so beautiful, so unspoiled. Your instincts are like perfume. Your motives a shimmering crystal. Hmm, maybe they have even more information for us. The carnate forces of Urquhorn and Kora are twined about the memory of pain. They respond to these words. Hold, what you are doing to us is wrong. Why do you do this thing? Right, so that's like the third time we've heard that talking to the Urquhorn like that, like kind of asking them why they're doing what they're doing, is um, a good thing. So we probably want to do that uh, probably when, we, when we meet the Urquhorn. We haven't actually met the Urquhorn once yet. Um, so when we do, we definitely want to ask them that question, um, because three races have now told us that is what we should do. But we're now a couple of days away, four days, from getting into this quasi-portal. It's somewhere around here, and here comes another ship, another Aralu, I guess. Maybe even more information. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an Aralu. Yep. Last night as you slept, I touched your face and you smiled. But now you frown. A pity. Smiling is healthier. Yeah, that's a bit strange, but uh, might as well ask for some more information again. The enemy of your enemy is your friend. At least for a time. That's, uh, that's very true. Farewell, um, child. We will take those words with us. Aralu. Um, not really. So, 16 and 17. There we go. It was right next to us. Very nice. And let's not waste time. Come on, let's get in. There we go. 
And we're back in Quasi Space, so let's head over to, um, oh jeez, Falearalaf, okay, Falearalafali, there we go, pronounced it, who thought it was possible, um, obviously not many people, but here we go, let's go back to, f okay, I'm not going to say it again, let's go back to the Aralu homeworld, the Aralu homeworld we're going to now, uh, because we've got the Alpha Pavonis, we got the um, Warp Pod from Alpha Pavonis 7 from that Dreadnought that crashed. Um, so, we should now be able to get our Quasi Portal spawner that they were talking about. Um, and then, I think the best thing to do would be go over to the Ungar to find out what they're doing. Um, ask them a few questions about the goings on at the moment. Here we go. The prospect of sharing the easy way with you excites us. If you have found the Urquan Warp Pod, this prospect can be made a reality. Yes, we have the Warp Pod from the Urquan Wreck, so we can now hopefully get the what portal. A surprise! As we have always said, humans are a most resourceful and clever species. We are so proud of you, but don't worry that you shall have to wait. We are prepared. Even now, our technical personnel are equipping your ship with a custom version of our portal spawner device. The device is usable only in hyperspace. Whenever it is activated, the spawner will focus several interdimensional teeth beams adjacent to your vessel, opening a temporary hole into quasi-space. Move quickly through the portal. After your ship has passed into quasi-space, you can choose any of the nearby portals which lead back to hyperspace, thus saving you needless transit time. Be keenly aware of this fact. The spawner requires a great deal of energy to function. We estimate that each time you use the device, it will consume 10 of your fuel units. I suppose 10 fuel units is uh, not really that much Goodbye. compared to the amount of fuel you'd use to travel over vast distances of hyperspace. Um, that's one thing with Quasi Space, you do need the 10 fuel to jump into it, but um, you don't need any fuel to go out of um, one of those portals. And you also don't use any fuel while travelling across Quasi Space anyway, so it's all good. So let's have a look. Which one should we go to? We need to... which one was it again? Uh, did we ever go back to the arrow loop? I think we did. Where is it? Here it is. Oh, it actually tells you. So near Sakini. Okay, that's good. Don't have to guess again. I thought it was one, one of the further, uh, the closer ones to the planet. So that's good. So let's go back to the Aralu space in hyperspace, and then head off to the Umgar, Orionis constellation, and try and find out what's going on with them. So it's not too far away. About 15 fuel units away. Um, that's a pretty big star. Well, I want to check that out, but okay, here we go. So there's quite a few Orionis stars, but I'm going to head straight over to Alpha, and oh, here we go, straight away, as soon as we go into the Orionis uh, constellation, something chasing us, but it's very, very quick. So I'm going to guess it is a probe. It is very quick. Look at that. Uh, so I'm going to guess it's a probe. Did oh no, it's an arrow. That's captains, good. Or did we? I don't know, but uh, have you got any more information? Okay, obviously not. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. They're just giving a stupid sentences now. Okay. Yeah, we're we're not very close to Orionis. It was just outside of Aralu space. Um, so, Orionis constellation. Once we get close to the Orionis constellation, we st should start to see some other ships appear. Um, and that probably means if they're very quick, then they're just probes, because we're moving away from the Aralu space now. Um, I don't know how quick the Umgar ships are, is, though, but uh, hopefully they're not too bad. Uh, here we go. There's a ship right there. It is very slow. Very slow indeed. Look at it. Here it comes. <laughs> it's really sluggish. But uh, we've got enemy music, which always happens whenever you meet a thing for the first time. And it's definitely a new ship, like green little ships. Uh, so these might be the Umgar, maybe? I'm going to save the game just in case. But let's see. Wow, well, uh, both their design and also their music is quite strange. Look at the inside of their ships. What the hell's going on? And they they got three arms, about six eyes, two mouths. What the hell? Uh, so uh, let's have a look. How's that talking? Pecking along. I'm Captain Toby Diesel, four five nine eight, Starship Nova Mace. 
Okay. And go away? What do you mean? I've just met you and you're just... I guess they don't want to... I, I guess they're just embarrassed about what they've done to the Ilrath. Let's hear a joke though. I want to hear a joke from the Ungar. Is it good? Yeah, that that wasn't brilliant, really. Um, maybe uh, I don't know what to say to that. To be honest, it was quite a terrible joke. But I don't think saying the top thing will be any good. But let's. What about that talking pet? Uh, yeah, the arrow you gave you a talking pet, didn't they? No, did they not? Or do you just not know about it? Uh, okay, so apparently that is not good that we know that to the Umgar. So what's going on? I thought they were supposed to be... I didn't know they were hostile. The Aralu aren't hostile, so the, um uh, the Umgar are. So there's obviously something going on here, but their ship is very strange. What the hell's going on? It's like, it's moving so slowly, but then it has like a little boost. A weird, like, kind of hyper thrust thing. Uh, but okay, they're not very difficult to be honest. They've got a very short range attack, and um, Fuifo is obviously a bit, a bit too skilled. But look, look there it is. It like it's like moving backwards, like really slowly. It's got like retro propulsion almost, but very quick retro propulsion. And they've run out of battery, and their battery's not um, like refueling. So I guess I don't know what's going on. Now their battery's full again. I just don't know what's going on. Okay, but never mind. They're not too difficult. And I think that's the end of the fight, because we've just destroyed them. Uh, they don't give you that much, are you? Uh, they weren't that difficult at all, so I guess these aren't going to be too hard to get past. Um, but we've got to try and work out which star they're coming from. They came from kind of the top right direction. Um, so I'm going to guess it's like Eta Orionis, maybe? Or maybe Iota, some one of these planets. That's where they were coming from, I think. Um, but they might be coming from Alpha or Beta, I don't know. I'm going to guess it's like, normally it's like Alpha, Beta or Gamma, isn't it? So, I don't know. We'll just have, we'll just start with maybe Alpha. We'll just start with Alpha, maybe? Or should we just go towards like the Theta and stuff? I'm going to go towards, do you know what? I'm, I don't want to battle any more on guards because they're just annoying. Um, let's head towards, yeah, I'm just going to head, I'm just going to head to Alpha. Just, I'm just going to go through each one in the Greek alphabet order, I think. And, um... See if I find anything suspicious. Uh, so let's go. Okay, so there's nothing here. I don't think this is going to be a home world. Doesn't look like a home world. It, you, it's got to probably be a water world for it to be a home world, really. I think the only exception was the Androsynth, but I don't know. Maybe they're just because they're like robot people. Oh, but that definitely looks like a, uh, a water world there with a green ring as well. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.